What is good, Storm fans? I am Brent Cook, and today we're playing Lotus Field Combo. Just a few days ago, I posted that I think Pioneer is one of the best formats right now. And the day after, I posted a 5-0 with the very same deck list in front of you. I received a bunch of requests about going over the 5-0. I'm not going to do that. I don't really think the replay videos are very good. And you don't really get the insight into the decision. So instead, I'm going to play that same list here today. There's a lot of questions regarding how do you win? Well, if you watch the channel, there was a video about a month or so ago that you can find in the card above that explained how to win with Peer into the Abyss and this list overall. Because there's no Masterminds Acquisition, there's no Fae of Wishes, there's no Approach of the Second Sun anywhere. You don't need those cards. So instead, we are looking to cast Peer into the Abyss five times targeting our opponent. We do that using Balagad Recovery and Leer Disciple of the Drowned alongside Omniscience. Okay. Your other win that you can do is Layer of the Hydra. So the idea is you have Thespian Stage in play and you start your combo turn, you cast some Hidden Strings, maybe you Peer, you Omniscience, and eventually you can play your land for the turn, which is Layer of the Hydra, or you can put it into play using a Boreal Grazer. And then you make a ton of mana using Hidden Strings alongside Pour Over the Pages. Eventually you turn your Thespian Stage into a Layer of the Hydra, this has already been on the battlefield. So when it becomes a Hydra, you don't have to worry about haste. And then you pump 20 plus mana into it and you attack. If your opponent has blockers, you can tap them down with hidden strings. In fact, one thing that I think some people may or may not recognize is when you win with Peer into the Abyss, you usually want to tap down your opponent prior to doing so with hidden strings. That way they can't besage you, your omniscience or anything else. So. Just a friendly reminder, Hidden Strings, you can target your opponent's permanence, is actually pretty vital in a list like this. But the real way that you win is peer targeting your opponent five times most of the time. So a lot of people have been asking me, Bryant, do you think that's good enough? There's a flex spot in your main deck. Why not just run a Masterminds? Because then you could run an approach in the board. I do not want to run dead cards. So let me say that one more time. Just for emphasis, I do not want to play dead cards. That is the whole point here. If I wanted a terrible card, I'd play it. Like, that's just the fact of the matter. And Approach sucks. I said it, it's a terrible card. And it's only good when you've already won the game. Meanwhile, Peer into the Abyss is good at almost every stage of the game. Obviously, you don't want it in your opening hand. But mid-combo, it helps you win. Or, when you've actually won, it wins the game itself. So those are the type, the style of cards you want. You want cards that are flexible enough that can play different roles within your deck. You're not interested in Approach of the Second Sun. It's a crutch for people that aren't willing to put in the extra effort. And with this deck list, yes, you have to win with Layer of the Hydra or Peer, but I just posted a 5-0, and I've had a bunch of 4-1s with this deck list. It is so good. So I think you should just put away your Fae of Wishes, your Masterminds Acquisitions, and just get used to winning with the list in front of you because it's super good. So everything else about the main deck is kind of stock. I am choosing to run a third copy of Dark Petition over a random untapper. So some people like playing uh, Voyaging Seder or Hope Tender in their deck, or they'll run a third copy of Emergent Ultimatum. I think that the green untappers honestly kind of stink. I've played a bunch with them at this point. My last video actually had them in there. I'm not a fan. So in order for them to be good, you need to play them on turn two. But as a singleton, that's so unlikely to happen right? Like statistically, it's just not going to happen. More often than not, you're going to draw a mid combo and it's going to be bad. So on top of that, the most popular deck in the format is red, black, mid range, a deck with tons of removal in it. And you're just giving them a value target to kill. Why would I do that? When instead you can run dark petition, they give you more ways of getting hidden strings to generate mana. Or if you're overloaded on mana, it goes and gets emergent ultimatum. Like I've just been absolutely loving three Dark Petition. I don't see myself going back. You could run a third Shimmer, but I think Dark Petition just being Demonic Tutor for Hidden Strings is so much better. Um, that really covers the main deck, I believe. In the sideboard, I have been running four copies of Silence. I believe that's different from the last video. I honestly didn't click it before recording this, but I've been playing four Silence. So one of the reasons I love it so much is that I was someone who always ran niv -Mizzet. And niv -Mizzet made a lot of sense to me. And then I started playing the Pro Tour lists, right? Because I wanted to make sure that I covered my ground. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something that was fairly obvious. So I started playing the Dramokas. And they had the same problem that niv -Mizzet had, which is they get hit by Aethergust. You don't want that. You don't want that at all. So 
that was kind of unfortunate, but they do act as a six mana silence. Okay. And then they have uh, Sphinx of the Final Word, which is phenomenal. So it can't be countered. It has Shroud, so they can't remove it without having something like a Wrath Effect, which is just beautiful. The problem with it is it's only instant and sorceries. So when you have Leer, Disciple of the Drowned, or Omniscience in your deck, it becomes really awkward, especially when these are vital parts of your plan. So no, I don't play Sphinx of the Final Word because at some point I have to resolve one of these cards to win the game. And Sphinx doesn't protect against that. Okay, well, you don't have to run those cards. You could run Thought Distortion. Well, the Is It Creativity decks and Blue White decks and a bunch of other decks in the format have started running Narset's Reversal for Thought Distortion. I'd keep on running into that. I was a big advocate for Thought Distortion, and I'm just not going to play it if people are going to misdirect it back at me. I've even seen uh, Narset's Reversal in the Mirror match because so many people rely on it for the Mirror. And I think Silence just does a much better job. You get to bully the control decks on mana because you get to invest one mana when they have to play three for an absorb. And then you can just bully them the rest of the way. Or in the mirror, it's a one mana time walk. So you're able to copy your Lotus Field while stopping their entire turn. It's just so good because you have that one extra mana. So I've really been loving Silence. Leyland of Sanctity is a card that is sort of unique to my list. Other people... I'm sure others out there play it, but when you look at the Magic Online list, not that many people do. Instead, they run uh, like into the multiverse or whatever for your discard matchups. Why not just run the card that stops Necromancia effects? Like, I don't want my Lotus Fields being exiled. I don't want my Pyramid of the Abyss to be exiled. And Leyland of Sanctity stops that. Abzan Greasefang, 9 plus discard spells. Red Black Midrange, 9 plus discard spells. So why aren't we just running Ley Lines? Get that Behold the Multiverse out of here. I'm not interested in that. I think you just want to run the most efficient card for the job, and that is Leyline of Sanctity. All right, so outside of that, we have Needles for the green matchup. You usually board out Shimmers for that. And then the rest of the sideboard is a little bit different from the previous video. We are running the Zakama Primor... I'm sorry, Zakama Primal Calamity uh, plan, which I wasn't a believer in at first, and then I understood it a little bit more so shout outs to x whale on twitter slash magic online and stefan schultz uh king of traders online their magic online handle is mental messed up they're both phenomenal players they sort of answered some of my questions about it because i wasn't so sure at first i was trying to board it in as a hybrid plan where i wanted to keep part of the combo but then board in zakamas and stuff like that and they just sort of convinced me that i needed to let that go and just fully embrace being a Zakama control deck in the cyborg games versus decks like Angels, Red Green Mid Range, that sort of stuff. You don't put it in against the Combo Mirrors or, I don't know, uh, Red Black. It's really just for the aggro decks of the format. So you board into a bunch of sweepers, you board out your entire top end. And Dark Petition actually helps a lot here. So it finds you your win condition, which is Zakama, or it finds you Path of Peril. A three mana sweeper. So Path of Peril gains a lot of value in lists with multiple dark petitions. A lot of people don't play the Path of Peril, but I think that's kind of foolish when you have three demonic tutors that make trouble black. So having at least one of these will go a long way. All right, so that is my deck tech. A little bit long-winded today and a little bit ranty. And once again, I'm going to say it. Approach it to the Second Sun sucks. Don't play it. You don't need it. All right. Well, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, put those down below. And uh, hopefully we 5-0 again tonight. It'd be cool to get two 5-0s this week with the same 75. All right. Well, I will uh, see you in the first round because I know you're not going anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first round. We're on the draw. So we technically have lands and spells. That means that this should be a keep, right? Absolutely not. With this deck, you really want access to Lotus Field one way or another, so we're going to Mulligan. Okay, so once again, doesn't have access to Lotus Field. We have a Scry land. I think I'm willing to go to five. This hand just doesn't play meaningful magic. This is the best hand we've seen. Keep. Not even close. 
All right, so we're keeping this, and we will get rid of Peer into the Abyss, and pour over the pages. We need this Bale Good Recovery to be our green source, so we kind of had to keep it. Are we playing the Mirror Match? We are not playing the Mirror Match. Or are we? They found Lotus Field! Okay, so it is the Mirror. Okay. Well, uh, I did not open on Grazer. Grazer is a card you want in the Mirror because it allows you to essentially... Time walk ahead in the game. Dark Petition. All right, let's go get our Lotus Field. Them being on the play is huge. We both mulligan to five, but... Ooh, and they have both halves of the combo. No, they went and got to besage you. So they already have stage in hand. Okay. We will... Also go grab a besage you. Play Lotus Field. Unfortunately, they get to untap with the combo before we do. They have the stage. Commune with dinosaurs again. They whiffed. All right, so they have three cards in hand, and one of them is a Besaju. We will copy. Copy the Lotus Field and pray that they don't kill me off four cards on their turn, one of which is a Besaju. No whammies, please. Stage, so we know that they still have Besaju in hand. Four. Yep, that's a good one. They copied. Or, yay, that means that they're passing. That's good. Okay. Hidden strings. Okay, and then we will pour over pages. Pour over the pages. My bad. We found our ultimatum. Black, green. Let's cast it. Floating four. Peer into the abyss. Leer and pour. I don't want to get omniscience before I'm ready because we need the omniscience to win. We know that our opponent's sitting on a Besaju. Okay, let's draw a lot of cards here. And now the pour, discard a lotus field, hidden strings, 18 cards in deck. We'll cycle a vizier. So we have the layer of the hydra. And the Omniscience. I'm just trying to see what we have access to here. We'll play the Omniscience. Try to get them to use their the Sage you, even though it doesn't matter. Let's card a land. 14 cards left. Play the Leer. Looks like they're going to make me peer them out, so let's do it. I guess I can make some more mana first. 14 cards left in deck, so we don't have to worry about this pour over pages. Discard stage, why not? Petition, grab the hidden strings. Petition, grab the Balagad recovery. Impulse, grab the Balagad recovery. Time to start winning. We have enough mana floating that we can easily recast the, um, the omniscience after they try to besage you it. Let's start at you. Okay, return the peer, and our opponent concedes. So we've gotten game number one. So I did mention how Grazer's pretty good in the mirror. I still think that's true. When you have silences, you're sometimes allowed to board out at least one Grazer. I think that Petition can be a little clunky, so we're fine boarding out one of those. And then I think you can actually board out on Shimmers. Shimmers do help you consistently find your combo, which is good. But I also think having Grazer to put you ahead is pretty important. So this is how I'm going to choose the board. Yikes. Technically it has Lotus Field, but this is a slow one. This is so much better. So much better. Keep. Let's get rid of one of the Besages. Turn one Balagad. Play the Forest and Pass. Botanical Sanctum. Hope Tender. I'm just going to impulse now in case they have like a rebuke or something or a mystical dispute. I mean, I think here we want the poor Sylvan scrying so they can go grab Lotus field here and they do. So next turn, they could be looking to go off Sylvan scrying doesn't really do anything. I could choose to keep open beside you and just play stage here. Maybe that's the plan. All right, they don't have the stage. Okay, six mana. 
hidden strings emergent ultimatum four mana available yeah being being able to be on the play in the mirror is so good what we could have done hypothetically was just play lotus field last turn and double cycle hoping to spike a silence i'm not sure what to give them here like i have the besage you so like part of me wants to give them the omniscience but i think that they might go get that with the behold anyway all right so i'm putting the omniscience back in their deck so behold they had silence as well interesting and now dark petition they're going to hidden strings again okay they untap using the hope tender leer okay they probably have me but i need to make them go through it yep 11 blue they still have two cards in hand that they have not revealed off the behold and there's omniscience and another emergent I think now's my time to blow up the omniscience put the hidden strings back into their deck so they put pour over the pages on the stack first and then the belly recovery targets i don't know like dark petition maybe behold the beyond they did do dark petition okay now pour they have two hidden strings in exile already dark petition this will go grab a hidden strings and then they can untap the lotus field and the hope tender they have to build up to the point where they can um Belegad back the omniscience cast the omniscience and still have mana to cast spells from the graveyard with leer because omniscience and leer don't play well together omniscience says from hand leer's casting spells from the graveyard so we have three hidden strings in exile there's one left in their deck so they lost a mana on that poor they barely get back the omniscience okay so they had, they had a poor in hand that's unfortunate Th that was almost a spot where we they didn't have any untap effects we want we I, I shouldn't say we win we get to untap okay they're casting a few copies of impulse they've likely found the fourth hidden strings by now four over pages yep they're on a four commune with dinosaurs list which is kind of wild and they are on a masterminds list they cast the approach sure thing so hope tender was good enough here to defeat me uh but this time we get to be on the play first time this match i think when i'm on the play i don't want grazers instead i'm going to bring my shimmers back in and i mean i could needle hope tender Mm, I think one grazer is better. All right, let's submit this. Game three on the play. Mm. So as a six, I think I probably keep this. So let's keep it as a seven. Obviously, I don't like double Lotus Field, but it's fine. Okay, they've kept six. We'll play Botanical Sanctum and pass. Ottawara. Draw for turn. The other Emergent Ultimatum. Not ideal here. We're going to pass. No need to mean phase the impulse. To sage you into scrying. Full impulse. So I could take the silence here, but I think the best card is actually just the vizier. So we'll take that. Draw hidden strings. Okay. Pass. Main phase impulse. I would love to draw Thespian stage here. They have Lotus Field give me stage four cycle vizier come on deck please pretty please draw <sighs> even a regular land there would have been good so i'm gonna burn the lotus field that brings me up to five i can cast a pour this feels so bad hidden strings can i not cast it with only one target should be able to cast it. Is this bugged? Because it's a then you may. I apparently I can't. And I just have to pass the turn like a dummy. All right, please don't kill me. They have stage. We know that they're on a silence list as well. Any land there would have been phenomenal. Draw another vizier. Let's cycle. 
So in theory, I could have just cast the Vizier last turn, but I wanted to push the envelope while they were tapped out when they couldn't silence me. They're tapping for blues. So that means they don't have silence. Draw. Okay. Let's think about this. If I switch phases, I think this is a win. Let's... I don't want to play into Mystical Dispute, so I'm going to switch phases. Okay. Untap. Okay. Untap. And now we'll do black, green, and in strings again. And now we tap for green. There's probably a better way of doing that, but oh well. All right, so we want Omniscience. We want Leer and Peer into the Abyss. Okay. They gave me the Omniscience. I, I, I kind of can't believe that. Wow. I love this. They just made my life so much easier. All right, let's pour. Discard. the I think I actually want the Grazer around. Let's emerge an Ultimatum. Dark Petition. And they concede. We got there. We missed our land drop that game, but we still managed to win. Silence never really came up on either side, but I'll take a W no matter what. We are 1-0. Let's go get the next four. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number two, we're on the draw. We have the Grazer opening, but we don't actually have a green source or any other lands, Mulligan. The five. I guess so. Keep. Definitely getting rid of Grazer. Or not Grazer, Vizier. And Hidden Strings. This is most likely the uh, Matic Incarnation deck. And we don't have a great hand for that matchup. Just because they play main deck are kind of a Myria and our hand just so slow. There it is, the presence. So now they have the two man enchantment to sacrifice to the incarnation. The Sage you is a decent draw. Land number three. And they put Yuri into hand. End step. Impulse. We find the Lotus Field. Love to see that. In another Lotus Field. <sighs> okay. I'm going to choose to disrespect the Incarnation here. Take the Hidden Strings. Because there wasn't really a good choice. Because if I don't play Lotus Field here, I'm like triple time walking myself. Come on, no land four. Or you can have it. All right. Do you have fires? Is that what this is? No Incarnation. There's fires. Another fires, and they pass. That's good news. We draw another stage. We're just going to copy Lotus Field and pass. I mean, if they didn't have the incarnation there, I'm not going to blow up one copy of fires. We can pass. They cycle a triome. Land for turn. So they can now play spells that cost five, like this Yorian. They'll flicker their Nylea's presence and get to draw a card that way. They have one more spell they can play, and they choose not to. With the Fires of Invention, they cannot cast spells on my turn. Okay, let's start on the Pour Over Pages. That was not very good. Discard Grazer. Land for turn. Cast the Bell again, getting back, Pour Over the Pages. Cast it again. There we go. Discard. Blue, black. Hidden Strings, tap for Triple Green, Merge an Ultimatum. I think I want to avoid Omniscience for now because they can use a Besage with the Yorian in play. So let's do Leer, Peer into the Abyss, and Pour. All right, so we will cast the Pour and then the Peer. Floating three blue now just so that way I don't have to worry about the Pour being messed up. Now we untap our lands. We'll discard another copy of Lotus Field. 
Let's cycle a couple of Viziers, make some mana. I love this deck. It's so much fun to play. I know that like, I'm not smiling or anything when I play this deck. I understand I probably look miserable, but I love that every game is a unique puzzle that I need to solve. That is like one of the best things about playing this deck. Just keep cycling. Like People probably look at Lotus Field and other combo decks and they're like, oh, well, you do the same thing every game. You could look at it that way, or you could like look at every game as a like riddle that needs to be completed or whatever, or a puzzle that needs to be solved. And I think that it's just like kind of like is playing a, a one mana one one, a two mana two two into a three mana three three every turn and attacking necessarily any more thought provoking. I would say no, but I don't know. People are allowed to do whatever makes them happy. Okay, we're almost to the point where we can win. First, we have to find our Omniscience. There's 13 cards left in our deck, and it is in there somewhere. Discard. Let's pour over the pages again. Untap, untap. Discard. Grazer. There it is. Sapphire Blue. Omniscience. Dark Petition. Grab that Hidden Strings. Play Lear. Hidden strings, let's make some mana. Now we'll hidden strings again. Why not? Let's dark petition. Grab the Ottawara just in case. Why not? Dark petition one more time too. Grab the impulse. Belly get recovery. We will return Peer into the abyss. Target you. Belly get recovery. Pick up the Peer into the abyss. Target you. All right, we'll tap Lotus Field for triple green. Bailey get recovery, picking up Pier. Target them. They're at two, so we only need to do this a couple more times. All right, we have, we're have we almost there. They're now at one with four cards left in deck. And then we have another Bailey get. Come on, you made me go all that way. Let me just finish doing it. So we've taken game number one. So I don't think that Grazer is particularly good in these matchups. Most of us don't play any counter spells in them either, outside of like a couple copies of Mystical Dispute in the sideboard. So I'm not really interested in Silence. What I am interested in are Sweepers. So I think we want Depopulate, the Ritual of Sut. They don't actually have a whole lot of creatures that pet the Peril kills. So I think instead I'm going to try bringing in the, the Zakama. So this actually is sort of a hybrid plan, only because it's a matchup where Grazer isn't good. Our opponent has once again started off by revealing a Yorian. This hand has everything other than Lotus Field itself. I think I'm going to try it. Turn 1, Ketria, Triome. Botanical Sanctum, pass the turn. I'm not going to complain about drawing Hidden Strings, but... I don't know, Lotus Field might be nice. Selvin's Crying, something like that. Impulse, we have six of those. Sun Petal Grove. Bitter Reunion. Discard the Triome. There we go. Alright, we will... I'm actually going to play Besaidu. I think I like Ottawara a little bit more in this matchup. Being able to deal with Archon and stuff like that. Grab the Lotus Field. Pass the turn. They play an untapped Godless Shrine going to 18. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. We'll take a draw. It's another copy of Botanical Sanctum. Let's sacrifice a few lands and pass the turn. They discard a Bitter Reunion and a Regrin Triome. And untapped land number four, the Shaman attacks, it makes a treasure token, so they have access to five mana this turn. And there's the Enmatic Incarnation. They could sacrifice an enchantment that costs two, like this Bitter Reunion, to go get an Archon. And there it is. Surprise, surprise. Play the stage. Unfortunately, it comes into play tapped due to the Archon of Emeria. So this just time walked us. Fable transforms. Now they can start copying Archon of Emeria's. They swing. So much treasure. I'm at 14. They play a Jetmere's Garden, four cards. Leyline Binding. What do you have with the, that you're going to sack Leyline Binding for? Something that costs seven? Titan of Industry? Agent of Treachery? Stealing my land? That's just mean. So they can copy this with their Kiki every turn. 
Okay, they got me here. We have to concede. Brutal. Maybe I should have kept the Besage over the Ottawara. Let's try that again. On the play for game three. Nope. This is fine. We'll bottom one of the two copies of Dark Petition. All right, Belegad recovery is a land past the turn. Stomping ground. Sylvan Scrying's huge here. Now we can just go get our copy of Stage. Pass. Sun Petal Grove. Nylea's Presence. Another copy of Lotus Field. Not exactly what we wanted. Guess we take the Emergent Ultimatum. Would have loved a Hidden Strings there. Play the Lotus Field. Pass. Land 3. They just have the Singleton Archon in their hand already. That's so brutal. All right, play the stage. We have to pass. They just time locked us again. They attack for two. We go to 18. We don't have the sweeper this time either. Wait, why didn't I play Shimmer last turn? That was bad. I was so frustrated by the Archon that I forgot to play the Shimmer. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the butt. Bitter Reunion. Can't believe I didn't play the Shimmer last turn. That's going to actually be pretty impactful. Ketria Triome. Blood Crypt. And they're passing. Well, there's the Sweeper. So you're not supposed to copy right here because they could have a Besage you in hand. And I might as well copy when it's less convenient for them. Or kind of Ameria gets in. All right, Glasspool Mimic. So they can copy their Archon of Amiria here, but when I have a Ritual of Soot in hand, that doesn't really matter all that much. Okay, so this is a great spot to play our Sweeper when they only have open a Sun Petal Grove. Black, blue. Let's sweep. Let's play the Shimmer now. Find Hidden Strings. Play the Botanical Sanctum and pass. They tap for two and play another copy of Nylea's Presence. That's got to be a good sign, right? They have six cards in hand. Untapped land. Nope, they put it into play tapped. Five cards remain. They're passing. Draw. Depopulate. Hidden strings to avoid mystical dispute. Yes, yes, no. Pour over the pages. That could have been better. Discard a lotus field. Hidden strings again. And let's emergent ultimatum. Leer, Pyrrhonji the Abyss, Oregon. I just want to make sure that when I eventually put the omniscience on the table, it's going to win. Like, why open up playing our enchantment into this? Well, like, we can tap down their lands and win later. Okay, and then we'll float mana here. Untap, untap. Discard a land. Let's tap down their lands. All right. So all they have now is a Blood Crypt. Should be pretty easy. Well, I have some cycling to do with these Viziers, so let's get that out of the way. We have plenty of time. 13 minutes to win a game? Easy peasy. And if you're not interested in watching me win the game, you're always welcome to skip ahead. You will not be hurting my feelings. Dark Petition. We'll cycle again. Let's cast the Dark Petition, just go get the Omniscience. Try to speed this up a little bit. Play the Omniscience. Cast Pour over the pages. Impulse. Grab the Leer. Play Leer. Impulse again. Grab the Zakama, why not? Just to assert dominance. Cast the Zakama. Untap her lands. All right, let's try to win the game now. Return Peer. Target you. Return Peer again. Target you with Peer. All right, all three Balagads are in the graveyard, and they have conceded. We're 2 well. Easy peasy. I told you. Three more matches left. Let's go win those ones. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com decklist.
Okay, we're on the draw again, but we do have Lotus Field and Thespian Stage already in hand. A little bit worried about our opponent revealing a Gigantha. That usually means aggro decks. Let's see. Layer the Hydra, so they could be red-green. All right, Grazer. Nope. Play the ta uh, Breeding Pool tapped. We'll pass the turn. This hand might be a little bit slow if we don't draw a Grazer in the first few turns. Assuming that it is red-green. Mutavolt. Slow opening, but I mean, our hand is also slow. Another Lotus Field. Okay. Pass. They just conceded. Sure. You got it. All right, so we're going to board out the entire combo. As we mentioned, we get to do the Zakama plan. We are a Zakama control deck now. Every day I'm zakama -ing. All right, we have one more card to cut. I think it's probably Petition 3. Alternatively, it could be the the sixth Shimmer. I kind of don't hate that. Like, just having more Petitions to find Zakama or a Sweeper is very good. Submit. Well, we have Grazer and a Lotus Field, but we don't have a Green Source. Otherwise, this hand's very good. Be more disciplined, just Mulligan. This is the same hand that we just Mulliganed away to 5. No Lotus Field, but I think you're supposed to keep this. Down Dark Petition and Goodbye Grazer, unfortunately. Layer the Hydra. Llanowar Elves. Pour over the pages. We'll just play a tap reading pool. If I can find a Lotus Field quickly, we can cycle the Vizier and then cast Path the Peril on the same turn. There's the Red Source. Reckless Storm Seeker. Okay. Unfortunately, the mulligan to five killed me here. Draw the Seiju. Play the Ottawara Pass. We'll impulse on their end step. Mutavolt. Three mana. Okay, it's looking tough for us at the moment. This Path of Peril only hits the Llanowar Elves. Yep. Taking a lot of pain here. We're at eight life. I don't even know if I want to show them the Path of Peril. Take the Vizier. Come on, Lotus Field. Draw. Nope. All right, game three. All right, I'm going to swap the Petition and the Shimmer. I think we just have to be able to find Lotus Field. Maybe that was a bad choice in game two. I don't know. I mean, technically, it didn't impact any of our Mulligan decisions. Our Mulligan decisions were all just like one land Lotus Field hands. Game three, this time we're on the play. Keep. Botanical Sanctum. Play the Grazer. A breeding pool in. Pass. Besaju. Elish Mystic. Belaged Recovery. Sylvan Scrying. Lotus Field. Play the Field. Pass. Mutavolt. Elish Mystic. Lanor Elves. Another Impulse. Let's cast it. Leer and Pour. Those are both good. I think it's probably the poor just piece. We don't really have anything else going on here. Sanctum. Let's impulse again. Ritual of Set is it's Ritual versus Set. Ritual of Set versus Stage, and I think we just want the Ritual. Another Mutavolt. They have four in hand. They don't have a red source at the moment. They decided that they were done. Okay. Sure. Let's take a few draws. It's not going to let me. Okay. For 3 0. Two more matches. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. We won the die roll. We are on the play for match number four versus Ivan Draw Go. I think I'm actually going to keep this because I think I've played them somewhat recently and they were actually on Azorius. I mean, if they're not, their name got me, but I think that this is fine. Like, we have Temple plus Impulse to dig five, six deep with the draw step for the Lotus Field. Okay. Steam Vents. Fairly good recovery. Let's see if we can find Lotus Field here. Impulse. And we do! Love it. Pass the turn. Now I want to find Hidden Strings. Trevon Reef, there is passing. 
Play that field. The impulse and response, sure. We still don't know if they're creativity or if they're Phoenix. I haven't seen Phoenix in a while, so they're probably creativity. Two lands down. Pass the turn. Mountain. Definitely looking more like creativity now. Copy the field and pass. They cycle a shark typhoon. You've got it. So the shark is pretty important here because of a make disappear could be a counter spell unless you pay four when they have a, a token in play. All right, let's start on the pour over pages. Dark Petition doesn't have spell mastery, so you're supposed to lead on this anyway. And they do have the make disappear with the casualty from the shark token. Unfortunately, I cannot pay. But I can finish off the turn with a shimmer. Grab another pour over pages. Pass. Most lists don't have hard counters in the main, so we're able to bully them a little bit with our mana. Let's try another pour. Well, this person does have hard counters in the main. Okay. Play a layer of the Hydra and we'll pass. They impulse. And they're just passing back with five in hand. All right, so we're just going to keep casting spells, trying to wear them out. Dark Petition. Grab Hidden Strings. Cast it. Okay, so this is eight, ten mana perfectly. So ten mana doesn't beat another make disappear or a spell pierce, both of which are in that deck. So instead, we're going to take a kind of conservative line here. And I think I'm going to burn both of my Balagheds to make sure I can get this Omniscience into play. So three, six, nine, that's one short of playing around. I'm going to choose to just play cautiously here. If the impulse misses, obviously it's a feel bad, but I can't afford to get my omniscient spell pierced. What? No! Oh my god, what just happened? <sighs> that is really frustrating. Thank you, Magic Online. Wow. That is so frustrating. And now I'm probably going to lose to Big Score or something. Big Score into creativity. Prismari Command, and an Impulse, Fable, okay, and Step will Impulse, so it's worth noting they have a creature now for Make Disappear, grab a Vizier, I guess, draw, I guess we can use that to buy some time, Sylvan Scrying, go grab an Atawara, Secrets of the Key, Atraxa, okay, so they're not the World Spine list. That's good to know. They swing. I won't lie, I'm a little bit agitated over that misclick with the omniscience. Need to get over it. Need to play better. Sure. I don't see any spell pierces in there. So this is mana number 9. This is mana number 10. So we can cast omniscience next turn if I can draw into a spell with omniscience that wins the game. All right, come on deck, please. Draw. That was not it. Cycle of Vizier. We have a lot of hits that just win the game here. Let's see one, please. Draw. Nope. We're going to bounce the Atraxa before they can copy it with Fable. Play Stage. And then just copy Lotus Field. I think we missed our window to win this. Okay, we go to 15. Another Fable. We know that they have a make disappear. Play the Sanctum. We'll pass. Like in theory, I could animate the layer of the Hydra, but I just don't think it's worth attacking and making them jump block. Inside beginning of combat, they are going to copy a goblin token. Okay, let's make a giant Hydra, I guess. But the way that this game ended up going, I think even if I cast the Omniscience, I would have blanked. Block. Are you hard casting a Droxa? You are. And they found another negate. So you, they have two main deck negate. Yeah, there's no way through this. Let's cast Impulse. The only way that I could think of that I could win. Ooh. I wasn't thinking about Leer. What are the odds they have no removal in hand? Probably pretty low. All right, we'll go to seven. Leer, Disciple of the Drowned. No removal spells, please. Hidden Strings? Did we find the one way to possibly win this game? 
So they have one mana, and they're bouncing this. Sure. Okay, so that happens. Now we replay Leer Floating 2, which gives me enough mana to play Pour Over the Pages from the Graveyard. Holy moly, did I find the window? That was not very good. Discard Lotus Field. Okay, Pour again. That was also not very good. Discard the Grazer. I think we're supposed to Dark Petition for a Hidden Strings. Grab Hidden Strings. Cast it. Hidden Strings again. So I have 13 mana. So I could play out the Omniscience and then play Shimmer. But if I don't hit, I'm in a tough spot. Then again, I'm, I would only be casting Impulses from the Graveyard. I think the Omniscience line is just slightly more risky. So I'm going to choose a slightly more conservative line. All right, this wins the game. Hidden Strings. Let's play the Omniscience. 14 minutes on clock. We need to close this out. Scrying. Go grab an Atawara. Shimmer. That was a blank. Hidden Strings. Okay. Put it on the Leer. Shimmer again. Okay. Let's grab Behold. Cast the Behold. Peer into the Abyss. Dark Petition. Pour over the pages. Here you. Pour. Discard. Cast the Dark Petition. Grab a Hidden Strings. Tap for green. Delegate Recovery. Get back the Dark uh the Peer into the Abyss. A little bit worried about time at the moment. I'm trying to play quickly, but maybe I should just take my time. Down to 13 minutes. It's half the round clock already. Okay. Just making some more mana. I don't know why. I'm just nervous. I think I accidentally hit two there. The peer. Hear them. Four over pages. It looks like I need another Valigid recovery. There it is. Return the peer. I'm not going to bother casting the scrying. Okay. So they go to one. And peer you again. We somehow won game number one, but it took over half our clock. That was a rough game. Let's get these grazers out of here. Silence. Resubmit. Need to play faster. Game number two. I'll be doing more F6ing on the opponent's turn to save time. I am unable to keep this hand, Mulligan. Sure. Keep. Get rid of the Leer. They play a turn on Steam Vents. Another Lotus Field. Land Pass. I am way less afraid of their deck knowing that they are the Atroxa build. I'm just going to jam the Sylvan Scrying. Sure. Land number three. They're passing. Play a Lotus Field. Sacrifice, sacrifice. Pass. The Impulse on the end step. Secrets of the Key. Land number four. Creativity for one into Holebreaker Horror. Okay. So this is my window. And it's not looking too good at the moment. Cycle Vizier. Untap. Draw. Cycle the Vizier. Okay. They have three in hand. Play the Temple. We get to scry one. Don't need that. Four over pages. Discard the Lotus Field. We'll pass. I mean, my hand is good. I mean, double silence is very powerful. Okay, 13 life. Stage. I think I'm going to hold silence to see if they're going to try anything fishy on their turn. Okay, secrets of the key. I don't think they are, so I'm just going to copy now. Pass. 10 minutes on clock. There should be enough time, assuming that a silence resolves. This puts me to 6. I'm dead to a Narset's Reversal. That's unfortunate. Silence. And that just resolves? Holy moly. Okay. Hidden Strings. Tap this for black. Green. Dark Petition. Go grab another Hidden Strings. I think that they might have Ottawara in hand. Green. Nine minutes on clock. 
There should be plenty of time. I don't need to rush this. Here. Okay, they just concede. Yes! 4-0. One match away from back-to-back -back trophies with the same 75. Let's go get it. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Bryant Cook, alongside Brian Cobal and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. All right, we are playing for the trophy. Round five on the play. I'm willing to try this. So it's a little bit fishy. We don't have a uh, Lotus Field. We also don't have Stage. We do have Turn 1 Grazer plus Scryland into Turn 2 Shimmer. I mean, that is a reasonable number, number of cards. And if we hit the Lotus Field, we have Triple Vizier to make a lot of mana. I think we keep Stage. We have a Turn 1 Forest. Okay, let's hope it's Red Green and not Mono Green Devotion. Shimmer. We find the field. Okay. Pass. This is looking like we could possibly have a turn four. Turn three is theoretically possible, but not super likely with this hand. And it's green devotion. So we have to worry about um, Karn the Great Creator. Besage you who endures. Yikes. Draw. So I could peer. Um... Because this is seven mana. Alright, let's cycle a vizier. My best draw is hidden strings. That's really what we want here. Draw. Impulse. Cycle of vizier. Come on, hidden strings, please. Besage you. Definitely lagging a little bit right now. Cycle vizier. Lotus field. Draw. Play the stage. Peer into the abyss. We're just going to sculpt like a perfect seven card hand. Okay, we go to clean up. Actually, can I undo that? Okay, I need to keep the Hydra in case they crypt me. I still have a win condition. There's actually no hidden strings in here. Okay, there's a hidden strings. Don't need another Lotus Field. Okay, pass. Looking to avoid Karn the Great Creator. So I discarded my forest and breeding pool. So that uh, Besaju is actually just land destruction. They tap two mana for a Wolf Willow Haven. They untap, tap again, Karn the Great Creator. So this is probably going to be Tormod's Crypt. Crypt is actually very bad for me here. They choose Needle. Oh, okay. Sure. I think we can beat Needle. They name Stage. Okay. Another stage. Need to think this through. So the Hydra doesn't come into play untapped. It's worth noting. So I could hidden strings going up to six mana, hidden strings going up to eight mana, Leer floating three, and then we could flash back the two strings, but that doesn't actually help me much. I'm going to play stage, and I think I'm just going to start off on pour over the pages and get a little bit more information. That was actively bad. Okay, um, what to do? Discard the layer of the Hydra, I guess. Hidden strings. Blue. I can't emerge an ultimatum. The, the mana just doesn't work that way. I, I guess in theory I could have started on emerge an ultimatum, but I've already used peer petitions in the graveyard. Behold the Beyond Leer. Like, the only good card left in the deck would have been, like, Omniscience, poor strings. I don't know. All right, so tap this for blue, hidden strings. We'll put this onto the leer. So I can besiege you for one mana and blow up the needle. So if I do that, I go down to three floating. I copy, I go down to one floating. I'm one mana short. I'm going to try another pour over pages and hope this one doesn't fail me. And it did not. Okay, discard the Emergent Ultimatum. We just don't need it anymore. Okay, Hidden Strings. What we can do is we don't even need to blow up the Needle anymore. I can tap this for green. Put a Grazer onto the table. Lotus Field. And now we sacrifice these two. Pour. Discard. Cycle. And we've got to win. I just need to execute now. Yes! The opponent concedes.
All right, we're up a game and a very tough matchup. Definitely want needles here. And I've been talking to some people about the right way to board in this matchup. Razor helps with speed, which is really what you want for beating Karn. And Dark Petition number three is a choice, so are the two Shimmers. But in our findings, you pretty much just need to be lucky and fast in order to win. So I'm going to board out Shimmers, keep all three Dark Petitions, and just try to, you know, get lucky. Needle is for naming Karn the Great Creator. So this hand has no way of finding Lotus Field. The second grazer is a mulligan as well. So this is a hand that I think like a lot of people keep, but it's actually just a trap and you're supposed to send it back. And this is so much better. Holy, this is good. You're actually supposed to get rid of a vizier, which I know seems bad, but you're not guaranteed to have the lands for uh, Lotus Field. So you need to keep the second scrying. Ideally, well, you could get be really risky and just say, I'll draw land. But if you don't, things get really awkward. Draw. Okay, so we hit the Balagad. Put the stage in. Pass. Two mana for a Wolf Willow Haven. Draw. Atawara. Scrying. We'll go get Besaju. Play a Balagad. Pass the turn. Really worried about Karn the Great Creator here. Three mana. Piora, so that gives the opponent card next turn. Another Wolf Willow Haven. Three cards in hand. Okay. Grazer. Play the Ottawara. And then we'll Grazer. And basically, doing it this way means that I get to keep a green source for my Besaju. The Grazer resolves. We will Bloat Mana. Lotus Field enters. Get rid of these two and copy. Pass. The opponent has seven mana at the moment. Three off that one forest that's enchanted. The other forest, so that's four. Then Kira untaps that same forest that taps for three, giving them seven. With a land drop, they would go up to eight mana. Eight mana is Karn the Great Creator for Stonebrain. Or, I mean, Karn for... Any number of mana really gives them some pretty good targets. They untap the forest, okay. Six mana. Storm the festival. Whammies, whammies, no whammies. They found Karn the Great Creator. And an Oath of Nissa trigger, and they found Nykthos. They use Karn. Damping Sphere. Okay. Draw another stage. I... No, I can't do that. We'll just pass. On their end step, we will blow up the Damping Sphere and then copy Lotus Field, giving us 10 mana going into our turn. We know that they have a Nykthos in hand. They minus the Karn. So this is probably the Stone Brain. God Pharaoh Statue. Okay. Sure. We play the Nykthos. I'll auto yield to this trigger. End step will blow up Damping Sphere. They grab another forest and then we will copy Lotus Field. Okay. They have three in hand. Draw. It's a land. Cycle the Vizier, hopefully drawn to something good. Draw. Nope. Play a land. Um let's animate our layer of the Hydra. This game has kind of gone away from us at this point. I think you're supposed to kill the Kiora. Okay, the Kiora dies. I'm just going to hit F6. Once again, we're running a little bit low on time, so I'm just trying to maximize what I have. Cavalier of Thorns. Tapping for six mana. Another Cavalier of Thorns. They find another Nykthos. They plus Karn on the God Pharaoh statue. We will block. Need to draw something. Come on, Doc, please. Way too late for that. Um, I mean, I guess I could show them Needle. It's not the end of the world. I mean, most people know that it's already in there. Play the Breeding Pool. Pass. So there is a Storm of the Festival in their graveyard. Two Storm of the Festivals in their graveyard that they can flash back. Find another Nykthos. They unearth the Cityscape Leveler. 
When you cast this spell, whenever it attacks, destroy up to one non-land permanent. It's uh, non-land permanent. Its controller creates a tapped power stone token, so they can destroy the needle or the layer of the hydra. Instead, they go after the grazer. We'll animate our hydra and block one of these cavalier thorns. Okay, come on, Doc, please. We really trashed that game. Wow. Game three. Resubmit. Game three on the play. No. This hand unfortunately just doesn't do anything. Not the way I wanted this final game to go. Okay, our opponent took four minutes and then decided to mulligan their seven. I don't think we're allowed to keep this. We're going to five. Sure. I mean, this is the best hand we've seen yet. Going to get rid of Pour Over the Pages and Lotus Field. Keep. Temple. Get that scry action in. No, we don't want that. Not, not right now, at least. Forest into Elf. Draw. Vizier. Just going to Impulse now. Stage is good. Okay, so for a five, we're doing okay. So we found Lotus Field. We have Stage. We have Needle to stop Karn. What we need now is a payoff. There's the Kiora. Oh, which Mystic, they have three in hand. Needle, Karn, the Great Creator. Play the Lotus Field. Pass. Basic Forest, they have five mana here. Six with the Kiora. Wolf Willow Haven, now they can untap that with the Kiora. They animate the layer, so they're attacking for four. They have two cards in hand. Draw. We have our own layer of the Hydra. That's not a card I really want to use right now. Instead, I'm going to just copy. So you might be saying, why not cycle Vizier? Well, if I draw a Merging Ultimatum next turn, I need that Vizier to cast it. So that is why I'm opting to not cycle right now. They play another Forest, two cards in hand, six mana. They animate the Hydra again, so they're attacking for seven. I'm going to go to nine here. Come on, deck, please, pretty please. Another Vizier. Let's cycle. Untap the Lotus Field. Draw. Another Lotus Field. Please, deck. I just need an action spell here. Untap the Lotus Field. Draw. Another Scrying. That's disappointing. So we'll cast a Scrying. We'll go get Besaju for this layer of the Hydra. And then Sylvan Scrying. This one's going to go get a Temple. No, I don't want you. Okay. We are 25% of the way through our deck. We just need something good to get us the 5-0 off the top. Oh, no. That's not good. Okay. Four mana. That's Karn the Great Creator. Karn happens. Damping Seer. So now I'm stuck in a weird spot where... I could blow up the Damping Sphere now, but if I don't draw the um, the card off the top, I'm just dead to layer the Hydra. So next turn, it would be... If I take one here, down to eight. So next turn, seven, six, five, four, three, two, zero. They don't even need anything else. Sphere happens. What to do? So the reason to besage you now would be that Emergent Ultimatum, Dark Petition, all that stuff is live if I besage you now. I think I just have to. Get rid of the dampings here. We have a lot of hits for 25% of the way through our deck. Please, for the 5-0. That doesn't do it. Uh, I can untap my own layer of the Hydra, but that's it. I'm afraid that we are dead. Our draws in these post spore games have been not great. I understand that I bottomed a poor in my early mulligans, but those were the correct decision. Uh, you're not going to be able to convince me that I was supposed to keep poor over the pages over impulse when we have to assemble Lotus Field Thespian stage to win the game. They use the Karn. God Pharaoh statue? Sure. It's possible to beat the God Pharaoh statue for what it's worth. Oh, it's Mystic. All right, I'm at seven. Please, Doc. 
God of War was a fine draw, but we still haven't drawn anything that actually does something. They're untapping the Wolf Willow Haven. Four mana. They're plussing on the God Pharaoh statue. Okay. Are you animating your layer of the Hydra? They are. So they're going for lethal here. All right. So what we can do is animate our layer of the Hydra. And now we'll go to blocks. We'll block their layer of the Hydra. Before damage, we're going to use Ottawara and bounce their God Pharaoh statue. And now we have a one turn window where there's a lot of draws off the top that are capable of giving us a 5 0 trophy if our deck is just willing to participate here. Come on, deck. Pretty please. Draw a step. <sighs> Why? Why are you like this, deck? <sighs> so frustrating. We're actually just dead to the God Pharaoh statue. They attack with the layer of the Hydra, three one ones, and play God Pharaohs, and I'm dead. That's so frustrating. Both post war games, we saw roughly 33% of our deck and couldn't win. They're minusing Karn. Yeah, that's going to do it. Okay. So disappointing. Draw. That would have won last turn. Okay. So we went 4-1. I mean, that's not a bad record. Mono Green is also a bad matchup, and I gave us opportunities in both post board games to win. Unfortunately, it just didn't happen. That's magic. You don't win all the time. I'll take 5-0 into 4-1, a near 5-0 as well. So uh, I have no changes. Even despite the bad luck we had in this league in match number 5, I love this deck list. I think it's... I don't want to say perfect, but it's very good in the current metagame. I don't miss the Hope Tenders at all. I don't think that those would have made meaningful differences in our round five match versus mono green uh let's open up our chest and see what we get here carpet of flowers those have tanked a bunch uh, nothing too good in here all right well thank you for watching i do appreciate it let me know what you think in the comment section down below perhaps there's a line that you think i should have taken in match number five whatever all right have a great day and keep storming hey brand cook here i hope you enjoyed this video if you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.